Welcome back. All right, so news of the day, part two, so to speak. Uh, Jace Haverluck, this has been rumored for a while that he was talking to the Canucks and the Canucks were going to sign him, and then they did. Uh, $800,000 at the NHL level. Uh, he'll make $200,000 at the American Hockey League level. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he makes it to the Canucks, and I think Canuck fans are going to like Haverluck. Now, last season he split the year between Florida and Ottawa. Florida, 15 games, 1 goal, 2 assists, and 3 points. In Ottawa, 11 games, 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points. So that's 10 points in 26 games. I, I honestly think this is a really good signing for Benning. And, you know, it's it's an interesting time for Benning. I'm sure Jim Benning realizes they're spending too much money in their bottom six. It should not stop him from trying to improve the bottom six. And and that's the key thing, is when you're already looking at this money you're spending and saying, wow, so we've spent a lot, you're you're just going to have to bite the bullet and, and improve that bottom six. And if you have to waive players, send them to the American League, then that's what you've got to do. Uh, the Canucks need to be improving in the offseason. Uh, Gaudet signs a one-year $950,000 extension. He's going to be wearing number six, which has people wondering if Howard Luck might wear number eight. We'll see. But uh, Gaudet's the first Canuck to wear number 96 since Pavel Bure. Bure didn't wear 96 for long. Um, it, it seemed to be bad luck for him, so he did go back to number 10 not long after that. But uh, he was number 96 for a while there, and... Uh, I remember that was odd at the time he did that. I thought, gee, I, I don't know. And then, yeah, it, it didn't work out too well. But, uh, yeah, hopefully it works out better for Gaudet than it did for Bury, and that's good news. So Gaudet and Howard Luck a combined $1.7 million for them if they both play the full season in Vancouver. And, uh, yeah, so Jace Howard Luck, welcome to the Canucks, and uh, hopefully he makes the team. Uh, I think he can provide for the Canucks... Uh, on, on the level of, say, a poor man's Josh Levo. And Levo's still out there as a UFA, and I would not be surprised to see the Canucks circle back and find a way to bring Josh Levo back into the fold. If they can get a healthy Josh Levo and find a way to either trade Vertanen or keep Vertanen, uh, I think, honestly, the concerns that this team's going to fall back, I, I think some of those go by the wayside. Part of the reason they go out and they rent to Foley is because of injuries on the roster to guys like Levo. So if they could bring him back, and along with some other additions they've had in the offseason, I think they could be just fine. Uh, the Leafs. So this has come out that they're offering a million dollars going into um, your arbitration hearing, and Mikheyev is looking for $2.7 million. Arbitrator will normally kind of split the difference, maybe a little bit towards the player side. So if it's 2.2, 2.3, Maybe as high as $2.5 million, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, the Leafs offering $1 million, if your answer to that is going to be, that seems really cheap. That's the idea. Um, you're not going to offer $2 million because you'll offer $1 million, lowball them, and, and see if, if you come out saving some money. So we'll see how much he gets. That's due on Wednesday. That's when the hearings start. So look for some more restricted free agents to be signed between now and Wednesday. So that's tomorrow. We're going to start seeing them get signed. And then after that, of course, because they don't all go on Wednesday. That'd be great if they all had their hearings on Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, I would imagine most players will get signed before going to arbitration. Uh, Joachim Nordstrom signs a one-year deal for league minimum with Calgary, which is why I'm wearing a Calgary jersey. And this technically is now out of the rotation for them. So it's kind of too bad to lose this jersey, to be honest. And and I'm not disagreeing that the, the Heritage jerseys aren't better. But this isn't a bad jersey. I'm, you know, it's kind of, kind of too bad it's gone. But it means that now it's a, it's a, it's a vintage. It's a throwback. So that's how that works. Now all the vintage throwbacks are just the regular jerseys, and all the regular jerseys become vintage throwbacks. I love collecting jerseys. So Nordstrom with the with the Flames. I think you're gonna like Joachim Nordstrom. And again, it's Boston gets these guys, brings them in. They do well on the fourth line, and then they they sh ship them out, and they they have new fourth liners. This is a regular for Boston. And we'll see if Nordstrom does as well for Calgary as he did for Boston this past season. Good bottom six forward. And at $700,000, there is legit. There's there's no concern about that contract hurting them in any way. Again, a lot of players signing for league minimum right now. At some point, I will do a video where I put together a team of players who are making less than a million dollars right now. Because I think there are a lot of players making a lot less money than they would have been if not for what's gone on this year. Uh, not that necessarily Nordstrom would be a lot more, but I think if we'd seen the salary cap go up to $84 million, he probably would have made a million dollars, just as like a 
probably. Uh, Nate Thompson is going to be wearing the number 11 for the Winnipeg Jets in honor of Rick Rippon. So that's a nice gesture on his part. And uh, again, Nate Thompson, in, in interviews I've seen where he's been very open about his own demons and things he's gone through in his life, uh, seems like a really, really great guy. And uh, that's that's a good way to, um, to definitely end up in the good books with Jets fans and Canuck fans too. So we see you there uh, wearing the number 11. So um, kudos to Nate Thompson and all the best to him in Winnipeg this year. Uh, Eric Halla, apparently there's a lot of different scenarios out there for him and, and where he may go. I know Vegas has been talked about. I know numerous teams have been talked about with Halla. We'll see where he ends up, but in all honesty, he's probably going to take less money than he might have expected to. So he'll probably go to a team where he can maybe boost up his stats a little bit going into next summer or next fall, whenever the contracts come to an end next year. But uh, Hal is an interesting one. As long as he can stay healthy, he can be a really key forward. The problem for him has been trying to stay healthy for a full season. But we'll see. You know, Chris Tanev was healthy all year in Vancouver this year, minus, of course, the last game of the year he gets hurt. But then the pause happened, so everything was fine. Uh, he didn't actually technically miss a game. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding where Hal might go and regarding any of the topics on the board. And it's nice to get Gaudet done, Harrelluck. And the big one is, of course, Vertanen. How much is Vertanen going to make? And uh, how's that going to shake out? Because it, it feels like the Canucks are going to move him, but it hasn't happened yet. And we're still waiting on a lot of trade activity that hasn't happened yet. And I'm starting to wonder if it will. I am starting to wonder if the trade activity is going to happen just because of how many teams are up against the cap. But let me know your let me know your thoughts on that as well. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through and I, I did a preview for the World Series over on the Entertainment Guy channel today, so by all means, check that out if you want to see um, my my preview for, for... It's weird. It's odd to me to be previewing something that's not hockey. But hey, uh, thank you guys so much for all your support. I will link to the Entertainment Guy at the end of this video. There will be a link to that channel in this video. So yeah, there you go. Thanks again for all your support. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video and the Entertainment Guy is almost to 15,000 subscribers, which is awesome because that's been my pet project and it's nice to see it picking up some steam. Thanks for all your support along the way. Getting this one to, I think it's 167, almost 168,000 on this channel. That's kind of awesome. Thanks again and I will uh, talk to you guys soon. I also want to say, uh, while I have all of your attention, I had to push back the... Uh, Patreon live stream today into tomorrow because we had stuff going on today that just kept pushing it back and I thought no we'll do it tomorrow um, I want to do a live stream for NHL 21 on Wednesday I'm going to say Wednesday and if it's Wednesday and Saturday I want to have like a regular schedule for a live stream so I'm debating about whether to do just NHL 21 for both or NHL 21 one day of the week and then the regular kind of a Q&A back and forth where we end up talking about food live stream um, which, of course, you know, people come in, oh, it's a hockey live stream. Why are they talking about fast food again? But that's the way it works, and uh, it's kind of fun. So by all means, tune in for that. And when I do the live streams on the main channel, if it's PlayStation, I don't really have a chance to, to pre-warn everybody. But tomorrow I will try to make sure to mention that. And as always, um, stay safe out there. 2020 is getting closer to being done. And that's, that's for the best. And yeah, thank you guys so much for, for helping this channel grow to the, to the length that it has and, and the numbers that it has. It's fantastic. You guys are awesome. I'll talk to you again soon.